Okay, I'm hoping this time it's better. I just tried to do this video and my brain is like, oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's like a, a little herd of brain cells up there and there's a, there's like a, a sheepdog trying to herd them into a group so that they can work. <laughs> That's me in the morning before I've had coffee. I just saw a video called The Earth is 6,000 Years Old and <laughs> guy in a lab coat. That's supposed to make him seem more, I don't know. I suppose I'm no different. I've got my Indiana Jones hat. Actually, this is my lizard hat. It has nothing to do with fossils. I did have a different hat when I was um, when I was hunting for fossils, and it wasn't this cool. I wish I had had this hat, but I did not. I had something similar, though. Anyway, um, I just, you know, I look at somebody who's a grown adult who's proudly declares the earth is 6,000 years old. I have fossils in my house that are older than this. These are grown adults that insist on believing <laughs> despite the fact that every science in existence says otherwise. They believe the earth is 6,000 years old because a book says, oh my goodness, it's a book! Let's see, if I were to say that um, Lord of the Rings was true, oh, you know, it's written, it's well written, it's, well, actually the Bible isn't well written, so that doesn't really, doesn't matter about that, but it's old, Lord of the Rings is old, it's been around a while, pretty old, it's very, very detailed historically, you know, I mean, it's, it came up with its own history, very much like the Bible did, because the Bible is not remotely historically accurate, well, there's a lot of Rem not remotely historically. I try saying that a couple times. Anyway, <laughs> it's not. It's not. The Bible is contradictory to real history. Lord of the Rings is a very detailed historical account that didn't really happen. It's contradictory to real history. That makes them very similar, as far as books go. You know, um, except there's one huge difference. Lord of the Rings has lovable characters that you actually cheer for. <laughs> and the Bible is pretty much filled with despicable characters, although there are a few. There are a few uh, that, that you know, are good. <laughs> good hero types, but they're fiction. Anyway, just like Lord of the Rings. Uh, I, I am digressing in the worst imaginable way. Okay, so uh, what was I saying? <laughs> All right. The idea that the Earth is 6,000 years old. All right, if we, we were looking at Lord of the Rings and saying that, you know, it's historically accurate, and it, <laughs> the Earth would be much younger still because I think there's just, we don't really get into who Bilbo's dad is, do we? It's just Bilbo and then Frodo, right? And Frodo's a, not even his son. He's like a nephew. Okay, so there's two generations, and we don't have anything before Bilbo, so... I'm thinking Bilbo was the first hobbit that was actually created by God. So that makes the earth, and, and Bilbo's 111. He's probably more like 115 by the time he finally dies because, you know, he, he his aging accelerated after he was parted from the ring. But Bil uh, Frodo is younger, so gee, you know, if you add Bilbo's lifespan to Frodo's lifespan, Whew, you're probably looking at about 200 years. The Earth is just 200 years old. You know? Or, actually, that isn't really true. Because Lord of the Rings, if you really read it, and I do, I, I mean, I did, I, I haven't read it for a while, gets into the various ages of the Earth, and, and it, I think it too, you know, makes the Earth a lot older than then even 6,000 years. So anyway, back to the story. It doesn't take much to learn. When I was a kid and I wanted to learn about things, it meant going to the library and getting a book. Certainly not buying a book, because who would, who in their right mind would buy a science book? <laughs> so, you know, if you wanted to read something, you'd go to the library. <clears throat> now, you go to Google. So this morning, I wrote... I typed on Google how are fossils formed and I found <clears throat> a whole slew of websites. I picked one that seems to be rather simply written because, you know, 
who wants to read a scientific article that most people can't understand anyway? Okay, so how are fossils formed? They wouldn't be formed in 6,000 years. FYI, if the Earth was 6,000 years old, we would not have fossils. That's the biggest thing. But anyway, so how are fossils formed anyway? There are several processes that plants and animals or their parts <clears throat> can be preserved. No matter which way preservation occurs, it takes a lot of luck and pure happenstance. Most living things are quickly recycled upon death. Scavengers and bacteria usually consume all but bones and shells. Still, millions of fossils have been found. If you think about all of the museums, university paleontology labs, fossil dealers, and private collectors, there really are a lot of fossils that have been discovered. However, when you think of the billions and billions of living things that have inhabited the Earth over the past 550 million years, only a very small percentage are immortalized in stone. The following is a list with descriptions answering the question, how are fossils formed? Generally, the top of the list has methods that preserve best, though their occurrence is seldom seen. How are fossils formed? Freezing, refrigeration. This is the best means of preservation of ancient materials. It happens only rarely. The animal must be continually frozen from the time of death until discovery. That limits the possibilities to cold hardy animals from the last ice age. There have been remarkable discoveries of mammoth and woolly rhinoceroses found in ice from Alaska and Siberia. Specimens with flesh, skin, and hair intact have been found. Some of these finds suggest that they were flash frozen with food still in the mouth and stomach. Drying <clears throat> Desiccation. Desiccation. I probably said that wrong. I don't care. Mummified bodies of animals, including humans, have been discovered in, in, in parts of the world. The soft tissues, including skin and organs, are preserved for thousands of years if they are completely dried. <clears throat> Excuse me. Asphalt. How? <laughs> Basically. In what is now downtown Los Angeles lies a 23-acre park called the La Brea Tar Pits, La, La Brea Tar Pits, officially Hancock Park. Within the park are over 100 pits filled with sticky asphalt so far. The tar pits were formed by crude oil seeping through the fissures in the earth. The lighter elements of the oil evaporated, leaving thick, sticky asphalt. The pits are famous for the number and high quality of Pliocene fossils that have been pulled from the pits. The fossils, dates, the fossils date between 10 and 40,000 years ago. Asphalt is an excellent preservation. Preservative, sorry. Asphalt is an excellent preservative. Bones, teeth, shells, the exoskeletons of insects, and even some plant seed have been pulled from the pits, and of course, many saber toothed cats. Anyone want to guess why there would be a lot of saber toothed uh, cats in the pits? That one's pretty easy. I think you can figure it out. <clears throat> because other creatures that they would consider to be a good dinner get stuck in the pits. And the cats jump in to dispatch what they see as an easy meal, only to get ensnared themselves. Anyway, how are fossils formed? Amber. Insects, spiders, and even small lizard lizards have been found nearly perfectly preserved in amber. Picture this scenario. A fly lands on a tree branch in an area that is now the Baltic Sea. While looking for food, it steps in sticky sap that the tree has made to protect itself from fungal infection.
As the fly struggles to escape, it becomes more and more entombed in the sap until it is completely engulfed and suffocates. The tree eventually dies and falls into the swampy water from which it grew over the course of millions of years. The tree, along with countless others, become a coal deposit and the sap with our fly is polymerized and hardened into amber. As more time passes, the coal bed is submerged as the sea level rises. Eventually the currents uncover the coal bed, slowly eating into the surface, little by little. When the erosion reaches the amber, it floats to the surface because it is lighter than the salty water. It is then washed ashore where it can be found. How are fossils formed? This is carbonization. Some of these words I have are unfamiliar to me. Dis Disfilation. In this process of fossilization, plant leaves and some soft body parts of fish, reptiles, and marine invertebrates decompose, leaving, only, leaving behind only the carbon. This carbon creates an impression in the rock outlining the fossil, sometimes with great detail. You find a lot of these fossils in Vader, Washington. And I think, I think that's the name of the city. Um, Chukana, Washington. We also have a lot of these type fossils along the shore in Washington. How are fossils formed? Permineralization. Permin er, <laughs> permineralization. <clears throat> this is the most common method of fossil preservation. Minerals fill the cellular spaces and crystallize. The shape of the original plant or animal is preserved as rock. Sometimes the original material is dissolved away, leaving the form and structure, but none of the organic material remains. For a detailed and illustrated description, see How Are Fossils Formed? The Work of Ages. Okay, I'm going to click on that. Doo -doo -doo. I'm trying to find the part that's new. Okay. Nature recycles. Because of this, fossilization is actually a rare occurrence. It goes against the laws of nature that favor recycling. Just above, just about everything that exists naturally on the planet, animals, plants, rocks, and minerals, are designed to be reused or reformed to support some other species or life form. Let's narrow it down to animal species for a moment. All animals are designed to be someone else's lunch. All parts, even the leftover bones, can be consumed by one species or another. Right down to the bacteria that decomposes the sturdiest bones and shells. This makes a very bad situation for the formation of fossils. Since every part is designed to be gobbled up, the fossilization process has to happen before someone or something gets a hold of the food. The process, <clears throat> the first step, <clears throat> excuse me, I have not, as I said, had coffee. The first step of animal, oops, the first step of fossil formation, an animal or plant must die in water or near enough to fall in shortly after death. The water insulates the remains from many of the elements that contribute to decomposition. In the following example, a trial, trilobite has died of old age on the bottom of the sea. Bacteria consume the soft body parts but leave the hard exoskeleton intact. As time passes, <clears throat> sediments bury the exoskeleton. The faster this happens, the more likely fossilization will occur. Land and mudslides definitely help. River <clears throat> River, bleh, river deltas are also good for quick accumulation of sediments. The, this further insulates our trilobite from decomposition. The sediments themselves have a huge influence on how well our trilobite fossil turns out. Very fine grained particles like clay allow more detail in the future fossil. Coarse sediments like sand allow less detail to show. The, chemicals, the chemical makeup of the sediments also contributes to the, fo the future fossil. 
If iron is present, it may give the rock a reddish color. Phosphates may darken the rock to gray or black. The, possi the possibilities are truly endless. That's something I learned when we were digging for fossils, that the color of the fossil depends on the, min the minerals that it, whatever that the, the animal was around when it died. Per, min per, per mineralization, as the sediments continue to pile up, the lower, layer, the lower layers become compacted by the weight of the layers on top. Over time, this pressure turns the sediments into rock. If mineral-rich water percol percolates <laughs> down through the sediments, the fossil formation process has an even better chance of preserving our ancient animal. Some of the minerals stick to the particles of sediment, effectively gluing them together into a solid mass. These minerals make an impact on our original trilobite as well. Over the course of millions of years, they dissolve away the outer shell, sometimes replacing the molecules of exoskeleton with molecules of calcite, or other minerals. In time, the entire shell is replaced, leaving rock in the exact shape of the trilobite. That is fossilization. That is the fossilization process at work. As the continental plates move around the Earth, crashing into each other, mountains are formed. Former seafloors are lifted up and become dry land. This is exactly what has happened to our trilobite in the picture below, which you don't get to see. New, now, now fossil formation is complete, but our trilobite is buried under hundreds or even thousands of feet of rock. Thanks to the movement of the plates, our trilobite will come closer to the surface and nearer to discovery by some fortunate fossil hunter. <laughs> Luckily, death, nothing stays the same. Sorry. I have a few of those. I have a few trilobites, but I have to say I did not find them. I bought them. I can't I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> erosion at work. Fossil formation is revealed by erosion. Wind, rain, freeze and thaw, even earth even earthquakes will help force the trilobite trilobite out of its burial ground and out into the light. If he or she is lucky enough is lucky enough the trilobite will reveal itself in time to be spotted by a rock hounder or fossil digger. Who knows? It could even be you. <laughs> As I said, I think this is written for young people. So anyway, that's basically it. It takes, as this article says, I mean any scientific article you read, scientific article by scientists, you know, the, the age of the earth is a given. 500 million years, it says in here. It's a given. It's not even like they're not even asking the question anymore. They, it's a given. They're moving on, and yet you have these new Earth creationists. Oh, it's six thousand years because a book says. It's like really. I'm sorry, people who think this way, come across like drooling infants, and it's frustrating. When I was a Christian, I absolutely never entertained that the that the. The, the, the first of all, <laughs> um, when it talks about the generations, you know, after Adam, whatever, I never entertained the fact that that was actually measuring the Earth age. I thought that was the beginning of, of written history, you know, and that millions of years occurred before that little bit of time. Um, I also thought that when God creates the Earth in six days or whatever. <laughs> because on the seventh he rested. Um, these days were millions of years. They weren't just a normal day. So I never in my entire time as a Christian was a, was a new earth creationist. And I have a hard time wrapping my brain around anybody who has any un, even remote powers of observation of the world around them. Who can think that, who can think this way or believe this way? And when I see an adult like Ken Ham walk up there and talk, or anybody from the Creation Museum talk like this is science, or even put this notion in science in the same sentence, I just want to vom vomit. I'm sorry. I, I I seem to have a problem lately running out of air when I talk. So I hope I'm not coming down with something because I don't have insurance. So anyway, 
yeah, I just, it's just, it's beyond my, my brain's ability to grasp that grown adults can believe in this. I just want to shake people like Ken Ham and say, really? You know, have you looked? Have you been inside of a cave? <laughs> have you, have you looked down into the depths of the Grand Canyon? You know, I mean, there's just so many things you can look at. Just, shh. It's, it's the Earth's age is everywhere. It's, it's evident. 6,000 years. Because a book says so. I mean, really. It, it, it surprises me that other nations on this planet aren't laughing at Americans more than they do, you know. Anyway, this is getting to be long, so I better end this. Have you been watching? Thanks. Bye.